right guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another micro struggle. Today I'm talking about the Arrow Pratt measure of risk aversion. It's gonna be a really quick video. Let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. So first, I just wanna talk intuitively about this Arrow Pratt measure of risk aversion. And so what we're just trying to do, we're trying to measure how risk averse a certain utility maximizer is. And so if we have two risk averse utility maximizers, what we're basically trying to say is, okay, person two, which I've drawn their utility function in blue, they are more risk averse than the person one whose utility function I've drawn in green. And the way you can tell that is because the concavity of person two is much higher, it's much more intense than the concavity in person one's utility function. And so the arrow Pratt measure of risk aversion is just trying to have an objective way to measure the concavity of the utility function. And so unsurprisingly, you might think, well, we should just use the second derivative of the utility function. And I wanna show you why we can't actually just use the second derivative. That's gonna be the basis for this measure, but we can't just use the second derivative, and here's why. Suppose that I have two preferences. Suppose that person one is represented by four x to the one half, Person two is represented by 100x to the one half. So notice that all I've done for person two is I've taken person one's utility function and I've multiplied it by 25. And we know based on utility theory that that means that these people have the same preferences because I can represent person one's utility in a bunch of different ways. And just multiplying it by 25 doesn't actually change the preferences, just changes the value attached to each bundle. And so if I know that these are the same in terms of preferences, let's see what happens if I just use the second derivative. Well, I've taken the first and second derivative. So notice if I just use the second derivative, this would tell me that person two is much more risk averse than person one. But we know that's not the case. We know they have the same exact preferences, so they should have the same amount of risk aversion. And so this arrow Pratt measure needs to have the same value for both of these utility functions. And so what can we do? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the first derivative to scale the second derivative. And so I've rewritten the derivatives here. And so notice now, if I take the second derivative and I divide it by the first derivative, and so what that's gonna do is that's gonna account for the fact that the second person's utility is really just 25 times the first person's utility function. And so what we're gonna do is first I'm gonna put a negative sign in front just so I make it positive because for risk aversion, it's sort of strange to say they have negative risk aversion. So we're just gonna have a positive number. And so what we're gonna say is this is gonna be negative second derivative scaled or divided by the first derivative. So again, if now I apply this arrow Pratt measure to both of these utility functions, you can see that I get the same answer for both utility functions, which is what we wanted. So that's why for the arrow Pratt measure of risk aversion, what we're gonna do is we are going to take the second derivative, multiply it by minus one, again, because it's concave, so u double prime tends to be negative or will be negative. We're gonna divide it by the first derivative of the utility function, and that's gonna be our measure of risk aversion. It's what we're gonna call our absolute measure of risk aversion. There's another measure, which is the arrow Pratt measure of relative risk aversion, and all you do for that is you take the absolute measure of risk aversion, you multiply it by x or w or whatever value you want to evaluate the risk aversion at. Just a really quick video on Arrow Pratt risk aversion. If there's something in particular that I didn't cover here that you would like me to cover, please put that in the comments below. But if this video or these videos in general are helping you out, please like this video, please subscribe, please put a comment below. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.